So welcome back to the Friday vlog series where this vlog almost got taken over by Rossi. Now, Rossi, this is one of my most important pictures of the year. And here you are, what are you doing? It's my script. But in all seriousness, today I wanted to share with you why after 10 years of buying and riding mainstream, I've decided to invest into a China bike. That's right, I've purchased a bike direct from China. This Windspace T1500 aero frame set with some Windspace hyper wheels and a Windspace handlebar system, which we'll all get into, but out of the gate, what are your thoughts on this frame right here? Color scheme, design, let me know below. And look, yes, I have purchased and ridden China bikes before, but never have I purchased a bike directly from China at such a low price point. And look, this is gonna be quite a big project on the channel. Starting with this video today, where I'm gonna to explain to you why and how this whole project came about, including some details about the company Windspace and these products I have in front of me, including a super disappointing first impressions we've had. I will then follow this video on with the build, which will ultimately turn into a comprehensive review. The benefits or value I can bring to the table for you, the viewer, is that I review bikes on this channel already and I was doing so before this channel existed. So for the past three to four years, I've been reviewing bikes and I can compare this aero frame to other mainstream aero brands such as the Cannondale System 6, the Merida Reacto, the BMC Time Machine, the Cervelo S5, the Specialized Venged, and the Chapter 2 Rare Ray. So if you're keen to follow this journey over the next few months and you wanna support my pipe dream to try and get to 100,000 subscribers before the end of the year, it's probably not going to happen, but I thought I'd throw it out there, please consider subscribing below. Now I've had this channel for about two and a half years and over that time, reviewing mainstream bikes. The noise has continued to get louder from you, the audience, about why I haven't invested into a bike direct from China and compared it to these mainstream bikes. And I've refrained from doing this for three primary reasons. Number one, I just haven't really wanted to invest my time into buying and riding a China bike. Previously, I've wanted to invest my time into getting my hands on mainstream bikes and riding them. Number two, I haven't really known where to start with all this. Given the fact it's China, in my experiences buying things from China, it can be more miss than hit. With so many different suppliers out there, just looking at Alibaba, stand alone, I've literally had no idea on what would be worth investing my time into. And number three, there is some nasty political tensions between my country, Australia, and China at the moment. And I know a lot of Aussies are saying, I'm not buying from China anymore, although they might find that a little bit challenging. But reflecting on that and thinking about my position in this channel, I'm not a political channel, I'm a bike channel. Lots of my subscribers come from all over the world. And the fact is there are people in countries where they can't get their hands on mainstream bikes or they can't afford them. So buying bikes from China is the only way they can get involved in the great activity of road cycling. And of course, there's a lot of interest out there in how do these bikes compare to the mainstream bikes. So that's why I've decided to embrace an opportunity that actually fell into my lap, which helped me sort of clear the way of the three things that were holding me back. So the reasons why are pretty simple. It's been interest from you, the YouTube audience. Now, before we get to the how, I just wanted to thank today's video sponsor being Surfshark. If you're watching this video today, there's a fair chance you've got the internet. And if you've got the internet, the problem with the internet is there's all sorts of weird units doing strange, fraudulent things such as ID theft. Well, for now under $3 AUD a month, which is way less than a coffee, you can secure your internet with Surfshark's award-winning VPN, which is essentially like having an online security guard as you enter the online world. Even my 71-year-old dad has now gotten involved in Surfshark and he is really enjoying the peace of mind as he surfs the internet. And he loves the fact he can put it on all his devices for the same monthly fee. If you wanna jump on board Surfshark, check out the link below and enter the promo code CAMNICALS to get your less than $3 per month offer, which includes four months extra for free when you sign up to the 24 month program. Thanks once again to Surfshark for supporting my channel and also the great offer to the audience. So it was May the 8th this year, 2020, when a channel supporter of mine, who's an expat living in China, who 
I've had quite a lot of dialogue with in the past introduced me to WinSpace via email. Now this channel supporter before the introduction had given me quite a lot of background on WinSpace and as a result, I'd done a lot of my own research off the back of that. So this was a warm introduction into a company that appeared to be a hit, not a miss. Now after being introduced to the owner of WinSpace, I found my way to the person that looks after relationships at WinSpace and he actually has a YouTube channel himself, Joe from China Cycling. In fact, I'd watched his review on the WinSpace bike before we got introduced and I'd actually watched some of Joe's other stuff in the past. I'll link to Joe's channel, China Cycling, below, but it was through Joe that we started a more detailed discussion about the brand, the bikes, and how a potential project would work with WinSpace and this channel. Now, I'd love to be able to share with you some detailed background on the company WinSpace after my discussions, but I wasn't able to find out a lot outside of knowing that they're based out of Xi Min in China, I think that's how you say it, and they've been manufacturing bikes for over a decade, but I still don't know much about them. Reason being, they seem to be quite hamstrung on what they can and can't say. I asked them a lot of questions, but no doubt they've got relationships in place with their clients, who they make bikes for, and as a result of that, they've got to keep things pretty tight-lipped. But I can point you in the direction of a video Joe made where he did a tour of the Windspace factory. I believe this was even before he started working there. But irrespective of all that, my senses tell me I'm in a good place here, and after many months of that initial intro, I now have a Windspace T1500 aero frame set valued at $1,500 USD, and also a set of their Windspace Hyper 50 millimeter disc brake wheel sets valued at $1,100 USD and an integrated stem bar combo valued at $290 USD. So these products aren't dirt cheap when you go down the Alibaba rabbit hole and assess other suppliers out of China, but I kind of like that about Windspace. It suggests to me that just maybe they are a high quality manufacturer based out of China. And still, when you compare this brand to other mainstream brands, they're about 50% less. So certainly from a pricing perspective, very low. And full disclaimer for everybody, I have purchased all of these products. I paid for them out of my own pocket, but I have negotiated a fair rate given the fact that Winspace will get some exposure on this channel through this project. Now, I know what some of you may be saying right now. Cam, you've gone disc brake. What the hell are you doing? I thought you were a Rimboy fan. Yes, I am a Rimboy fan, but for those of you who have been supporting the channel for some time now, you will know that at the back end of 2018, I built up a Chapter 2 Rare Ray and I've been trying to sell that bike for over 12 months. I think the blend of it being a unique brand and having a one by drivetrain on it has made it a tough sell. So I've decided to strip the Rare Ray put the SRAM one by on the wind space and it will become my new Crip Pig machine. So a little bit about the wind space frame set. It's UCI certified and they have their own custom mold using an in-house design team. The carbon fiber is a blend of Torre, T700 and T800 and the frame set only comes in one carbon layup as opposed to other mainstream brands where they may offer a mid-level and an upper level frame set. Reading between the lines, it appears that this frame right here would be somewhere between a mid-tier and an upper-end tier frame, depending on which mainstream brand you compared it to. And in terms of design, it's mostly airfoil inspired with some very large and thick down tubing and an interesting connection from the seat stays into the seat tube in what Windspace call their T-tail. The other thing that stood out to me is the wide fork, so it will be interesting to see what type of tire width you can get into this bike. In terms of weight, the frame, came in at 1,240 grams, the uncut fork came in at 412 grams, and the wheels at 1,475 grams, and the Windspace carbon handlebar stem combo with 105 millimeter stem length and a 400 millimeter width comes in at 398 grams. Regarding aesthetics, I'm personally still not sure on the color scheme. I guess it will come to life when I put the whole bike together. And what I was originally gonna do, and I believe Windspace offered this to their clients, is you can actually paint your own. I was looking for a Ferrari red color, but unfortunately that was gonna delay the process. So I stuck with this stock color scheme, which Windspace call their pearlescent blue, which kind of changes between blue and purple, depending on the light. 
The paint job does appear to be done with great detail, but I must say, I'm not a fan of the way the Winspace logo has been painted on the bike. I much prefer their older style, which is a bit less polarizing. Now, I hate to conclude on a negative, but I am documenting this process and this is what happened. Now, when the wheels arrived, they arrived in a nice box, as I would have expected. However, they did arrive almost a week before the frame, which started to get me concerned. Anyway, the frame finally arrived and when it came, it came in a box that was completely mistreated. There were footsteps all over the box, there were holes, marks, it was poorly taped, etc. And I can tell you this unfortunately triggered my preconceived ideas about buying direct from China. Yes, I know it's not Winspace's fault, it's the courier company's at fault here really, but if you purchased another mainstream bike, say let's call it Canyon from overseas, would you accept Canyon sending you a box like that? Probably not, but fortunately, the frame set was fine and it was well packaged inside, nothing was damaged and I'm looking forward to throwing a leg over the bike and saying goodbye to those first impressions. So after that initial experience, I'm quietly confident things will improve from here. This will be my last video on the channel before Christmas so I just wanted to say Merry Christmas and Happy Festive Season to everybody out there. I'll catch you all in the next video. Stop reindeer paws Out jumps good old Santa Claus Down through the chimney with lots of toys All for the little one's Christmas joys Ho, ho, ho Who wouldn't go? Ho, ho, ho Who wouldn't go? Up on the house, stop click, click, click I know, I know what you're saying That's it, Chris He's been a Rimboy fan Now he's gone with his But there is a reason, there's a reason for it Whoa. Sunshine Coast humidity has kicked in. I am bloody hot. Turn the aircon on, get it running, turn it off. Literally, you've got about 10 minutes before you start to melt, and I'm over that 10 minute mark.